Resourceful Designer, Episode 28, Secrets You Should Keep From Your Graphic Design Clients. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer Podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host, his favorite color combination is blue and orange, Mark Decote. Welcome to another episode of Resourceful Designer, the podcast to help you streamline your graphic design business so you can get back to what you do best, designing. I want to thank you for tuning into this episode as I discuss secrets you should keep from your graphic design clients. Any and all links mentioned in this episode can be found on the show notes page by visiting resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 28. Well, I hope you're having a great week so far. Been an interesting one for me. There is a website I've been working on for, oh, I'd say the past couple of months. I've been slowly working on it here and there. I'm lucky that the client is not in a big rush. It's only for something that's happening later this summer. So the launch deadline is still quite a ways away. But I had been working on this website for a couple of months already. And I just was not in the mood. Whenever it was time to do it, I just didn't feel like working on it. I just kept putting it off. I'd find other work to do. And I just didn't want to get to it. And then finally, at the end of last week, I sat down and I said, okay, what is the problem here? And I started looking at the website and I realized that the reason I didn't want to work on it is because I didn't like what I was doing with it. I didn't like the direction, the design or anything like that. So I decided to bite the bullet and I scrapped the entire website. I kept obviously the content that was required, but I scrapped the whole thing. I reinstalled a brand new, fresh version of WordPress, reinstalled whatever plugins I needed and got my theme up and running. And I started designing an entirely new design for the website. And let me tell you, this completely, completely changed my demeanor regarding it. And now I just can't wait to get back to it. In fact, last night I ended up getting to bed really late. It was well past midnight because I I stayed up and watched some TV, catching up on some shows that I had on the DVR. And when I was done, instead of going to bed, I decided to sit down at the computer, call up that website and keep doing a little bit more work. I was only planning on maybe doing 30, 40 minutes. Well, a couple of hours later, I finally had to tear myself away because I was having so much fun designing it. And sometimes that's all it takes is a new perspective. And it took me throwing out a couple of months worth of work. As I said, I wasn't working on it on a full-time basis. I was only tackling it here and there in between projects because I knew the deadline was so far away. But I'd still just about completed the website when I decided to just completely start over. And I am so happy I did. So maybe that's something you might have to do sometime when you're working on something and you just don't like the direction it's going in. Just scrap the whole thing and start over. So that was my big move of this past week is doing that and really enjoying this website. I've got a bunch of other stuff I'm working on as well, but it seems this website that I didn't really want to think about is now all that's on my mind. Even when I'm working on logos and other stuff in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking about this website and what I want to do with it, which is lots of fun. But that's not why I'm here to talk to you today. Now, before I get to the main topic, I want to share the resource of the week. And this week's resource is Adobe Color. Now, Adobe Color is part of Creative Cloud. You can find it by going to color.adobe.com. And that's color spelt the American way without the U. I always find that strange. Being Canadian, I always spell the word color with a U. But in this case, it's color, C-O-L-O-R dot Adobe dot com. Now, if you're not familiar with this, Adobe created this resource, which is a very easy way for you to create color palettes for your clients. And I use this all the time. It's one of the first steps I do whenever I'm going to build a website is I go to this website and I start playing around with the colors until I find the palette that I want to work with. And they have so many different things you can do. The color rules include analogous, monochromatic, they have triad colors, they have complementary colors, compound. You can even have shades of the same color. And as you pick your color, the whole color wheel, it harmonizes with itself so that you always have the best colors to work with. So if you're choosing a blue and you want a red, it won't pick two colors that might contrast. It'll find a red that'll work very well with the blue that you're choosing. And then once you have your colors... It gives you all the formulas so that you can reproduce those colors in CMYK, in RGB, in Lab, in HSB, as well as the hex numbers for the colors. And if you're a member of Adobe Creative Cloud, it allows you to save your color themes for future use. 
So when you create a color theme for a certain client, you can save it and go back in the future. If you need to update or do something and you want to know what colors you used, you have that option. So that's my resource this week, Adobe Color. I know there's lots of other ways for you to choose color palettes or just select colors, but this is the one that I use. I've been using it for years and I absolutely love the interaction and the way it selects colors. And it keeps me true whenever I'm designing something because sometimes I want to step out of the design and start selecting certain colors that just don't work. And this kind of keeps me penned in, but in a good way, by giving me a certain set of colors that I know work well together because of the rules that were chosen when selecting them. So if you're not familiar with it, give it a try. That's color.adobe.com. And now on to today's topic, secrets you should keep from your graphic design clients. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that you're desk is a mess or that you like to design in your bathrobe or you were really binge watching the latest Netflix series while you were supposed to be working on your client's job. And although yes, those are all things you probably don't want to tell your clients, I'm talking more secrets about your business, the way you work and the interactions with your clients that you shouldn't be divulging to them. Now this is especially true for home-based graphic designers. In fact, most of the nine topics that I'm going to talk about are specific to home-based graphic designers and don't apply if you don't work from home. And the first one I want to talk about is your home phone number. I strongly believe that if you are running a business, whether it's a graphic design business, an illustration business, a web business, whatever business you're running, if you're running from home, you should have a separate phone number than your home number. Now, whether you give out your cell number as your business number or you have a second phone line put in, or in a case like I do where I've got a service from my phone provider that they call Identical, where I've got two phone numbers coming into my home. My home phone number rings one way and my business phone number rings a different way so that when the phone rings, I know if it's a business call or a home call. Now, why is it important to keep your home phone number a secret from your clients? I mean, after all, they can easily look it up if it's in the phone book unless you have a private listing. The reason I say this is because this is your home. You aren't the only person living there, unless you live by yourself, in which case maybe it's not such a big deal, but who knows what might happen in the future. You might settle down with somebody, maybe you'll start a family, who knows? And at that time, it could create a problem. I mean, if you have kids, what's one thing that kids love to do is answer the phone. And the last thing you want to do is an important client calling you up, maybe a new prospective client calling you, and have your young child pick up the phone and hang up on them. Not too professional at all. Now, in my case, as I said, I have my phone that rings differently, and I taught my kids at a young age that if they hear the phone ring that certain way, they're not to pick it up. They can only pick it up when it rings the other way. And in my case, what happens is the home number rings in just a regular ring, space, ring, and my business number, it's ring, ring, space, ring, ring, space, And that's how they know the difference. If it has a double ring, it's a business call and the kids and my wife know not to pick it up. And kids aren't the only ones. Sometimes you might have friends or relatives over and you know those people that they hear a phone ring and they just like to pick it up even if they're at a stranger's house or whatever. Well, again, you don't want those people picking up your business line. And it's really nice if you have a separate number that you can actually turn off whenever you're not working that doesn't interfere with your home number. Because sometimes clients want to call you even though they know you're not working but they might want to call you just to leave a message. I have a client that doesn't like using email and he'll call me at various times just to leave me a voicemail. He's not expecting me to pick up because he knows that I don't work in the evenings, but he'll call just to leave me a message for something to look at the next day or to get back to him with. And yes, in my case, it is a little bit of a pain because the phone starts ringing. We know right away it's a business call, which is kind of annoying if it's happening in the evening or something like that, but we know not to pick it up and we just learn to live with it. Now, there are other services you can get, such as evoice.com, which is one that Wes McDowell mentioned when he was on episode 14 of the podcast. And Wes McDowell is from the Deeply Graphic Design cast, if you're familiar with that graphic design podcast. Well, I had him on as a guest in episode 14 to talk about moving his graphic design business. And that was one of the services that he uses is evoice.com that allowed him to move from Los Angeles to Chicago and still keep his same phone number from Los Angeles so that his clients from there can still reach him the same way as they always had. Plus, he set up another number for Chicago and they all route to his cell phone and he knows whenever his phone rings, whether it's a business call or a personal call. So there's lots of different options that you can use. 
But the point being is that your home phone number should not be used for your business and should not be given out to your clients. Now, right in line with your phone number, number two I want to talk about is your home address. Now, this one may seem a little strange. You're you're saying, Mark, I'm working from home. Of course, my clients need to know where I live. Well, the truth of the matter is they don't need to know where you live. I have very few of my clients that actually know where I live. My business card actually has a mailing address, which is actually a postal box at a UPS store in the city that I live at just outside of. And I did this on purpose because I didn't want my clients to know where I live. Not that I necessarily need to keep it a secret, but they just have no business knowing. If I need to meet a client, I will gladly go meet them at their place of business or I'll call them via Skype or FaceTime or I'll just go find some coffee shop and meet them there. And in the 10 years I've been in business, that's worked very well for me. And again, a lot of it has to do with just not wanting people to come by the house. I've mentioned before that my office is a mess. I don't know what it is about me. I just can never keep a clean desk. And I really just don't want clients to see it like this. And my wife would be really upset if I brought a client home and the living room or the kitchen was in a mess and the client might see it. So I just avoid bringing clients home. Now, there are some other reasons why you might not want them to know your home address. For one thing, where you live, there might be bylaws in place that prevent you from actually running a business out of your home. Now, that doesn't prevent you from being a graphic designer that works from the home, but it might prevent you from seeing clients at home. And you could run into trouble if your neighbors or if the community you live in discover that there are clients coming to your house for business purposes. So that's something you do have to look out for whenever you are starting a business from home. The other thing is insurance. If somebody comes to your home and they trip on your sidewalk or falling down stairs or something and injure themselves, that can drastically affect your insurance. And if your insurance company finds out that they were there for business purposes, they might not actually cover any sort of claim that's put in and you would be responsible. So that's another great reason why not to meet clients at home. I mean, when you're running a home-based graphic design business, the last thing you need is to be sued because somebody broke a leg tripping over a loose stone in your walkway or something. And of course, the last thing to be concerned about is disgruntled clients. What happens if you have a falling out with a client? Something happens and they blame you for something. You don't want them to know where you live. If you were working at an agency or if you worked for some other company in the design department, the client wouldn't know where you live. They would just know where you work. Now, yes, there's always ways for them to find out where you live, but I'm just saying don't make it easy for them by advertising what your address is because I'm sure it'll never come down to it, but all it takes is that one disgruntled client to really ruin everything. So that's home address, number two that I think you should keep secret from your graphic design clients. Now, number three is your vacations. Now, you're probably thinking, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to keep the fact that I'm going on vacation secret from my clients? Well, it's actually really simple. Don't tell your clients you're going on vacation. It's okay to tell your clients that the office will be closed or that you will be away from your desk for a certain period of time, but just don't tell your client that you're actually going away on vacation. It doesn't matter how excited you are about your trip to Hawaii or visiting some relatives across the country or who knows what it is. Your clients have no business knowing that stuff. And the main reason for this is You don't want them to know your house is vacant. If you work at an agency or some other company and you're going on holidays, brag all you want about your destination and the great time you're going to have while you're away because chances are the people you're talking to don't know where you live. But if your home address that I talked to in number two just a few minutes ago, if your home address is known to your clients, the last thing you want to do is tell your clients, here, this is my address, here's where I live. Oh, by the way, I'm going away for two weeks and all my equipment, all my expensive gear that I use for graphic design will be sitting there in the vacant house while I'm away. Now, you may be thinking that, well, I trust my clients. They're not that sort of people, but you never know when word will spread. Maybe a new employee is asking when he's going to get his business card and the employer will say, oh, well, we have to wait because so-and-so who does our graphics is away on holiday and that employee might not be the best of persons. Or maybe that employee goes out with a whole bunch of friends and while they're out drinking at the bar, somebody will say, oh, how's the new job going? Did you get your business cards or anything? And the employee tells them, no, the graphic designer, Mark, this guy that uh, designs all the stuff for this company, he's away on vacation. He's gone to Hawaii or something. So I have to wait. And somebody in the crowd starts thinking, hmm, this graphic designer has all sorts of really good computer equipment there and there's nobody home. 
So you never know how word will spread. So you never want to let people know, especially on your voicemail or your email responder. I mean, telemarketers call you all the time. The last thing you want is for your voicemail to say something. It's like, oh, I'm off to Hawaii for the next two weeks. I'll call you when I get home because you never know who will hear that message. So what do you do instead when you are taking some time off? Just tell them you'll be out of the office or the office will be closed. You don't have to tell them that you're actually leaving town. For all they know, the office is closed because you're taking some time to do some renovation on your house. Or maybe you can say that you're doing a conference or make it sound like you might be going away, but the rest of your family is home. So they know the place is not vacant. Whatever you have to do, or you don't have to tell them anything. All you have to do is say that the office is closed. Because if whoever that has that little inkling in their mind that you might be away thinks that there's a possibility that you might be in and out coming home in the evenings and that, that may be enough to dissuade them from coming over to your place and checking out what you have. Now, number four secret that you should keep from your clients is your political or religious standing. Your clients really have no reason to know how you lean politically or what your religious beliefs are. And there's various reasons for this. I know in the U.S. there's big elections coming up. I mean, you can't turn on a news channel right now without hearing something about the presidential debate. Well, just think about what it could potentially do to your business if a potential client who happens to be a Republican finds out that you're a very strong Democrat. Maybe they won't want to deal with you. I remember years ago when I first started my business on my own, I got a job designing the flyers and the marketing material for our local progressive conservative party candidate. And I was having a great time designing all his stuff. But then I got contacted by a representative of the local person running for the new Democratic Party. And in the conversation, they asked me if I had any experience designing political stuff. And without thinking, I said, oh, yeah, I'm designing stuff for, and I mentioned the candidate's name from the PC party. And immediately the person on the phone told me that since I was designing something for the PC party, they couldn't hire me to design something for theirs. Now, if I would have kept my mouth shut and not told them that, I could have got both jobs. Because regardless of my political beliefs, I could have designed something really good for both opposing parties. That's the same reason why whenever there happens to be an election, you always get those phone calls from people saying, do you support this party? Do you support this party? And if I tell somebody, yes, I support your party, the first thing they'll ask me is, can we put a sign on your front lawn showing your support for our party? And I tell them right away, no, I run a business from home. I don't need my clients knowing that I support one particular party over another, just in case it affects my business and I end up losing clients for it. And the same thing goes for religion. Religion should play no part into your graphic design business or your ability to design, but some clients won't think that. If it becomes known to them that you're Catholic, you're Jewish, you're a Mormon, you're a Muslim, whatever it is, they might look at that and say, I might not want to work with this person. Where if religion was never brought up, you might create a great relationship with them. So unless you're actually designing something for a church or whatever the case may be, if you find out that the local synagogue is looking for some marketing campaign for some event they're planning and you happen to be Jewish, then yes, you can play that card and let them know. But if the project or the job has nothing to do with religion, there's no reason for you to bring it up or to discuss it with your clients. So that's number four. Your political and your religious standings are things you should be keeping secret from your client. Now, number five is your work schedule. Now, this one might seem a little strange, but your clients don't need to know when you're working. One of the great, great benefits of working from home is you can work at any time you want. I told you earlier how last night it was around 11 o'clock. Instead of going to bed, I came to sit down at my computer and I worked for a couple of hours on that website. Well, my client doesn't need to know that I did that. As long as they know I'm working on the site, that's good enough for them. And I make it a point, my clients know that I work nine to five. I don't answer my phone. I mentioned earlier how my phone rings differently if it's a business. I don't answer my phone before nine o'clock in the morning and I don't answer my phone after five o'clock in the evening. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm sitting at my computer at six, seven o'clock and I'm still working. If my phone rings, I am outside of my quote unquote, business hours, I don't pick it up. Same thing, I do not send emails after 5 p.m. and I do not send emails before 9 a.m. for the exact same reasons. I don't want my clients to know when I work, regardless of when it is. I remember a few years ago, 
I made the mistake of telling a client he had some really rushed job he needed done. And he asked me, is there any way you can get this done? And I told him, I says, well, I can do that tonight. Maybe after the kids go to bed, I'll work on it tonight and I'll get you something by morning. Well, I didn't realize at the time how big a mistake that was. Because then after that point, and I did do it, I did work on it the evening and first thing in the morning, the client received it and they were happy with the job. But then a month or so later, the client came to me and asked me if they can do something. They had some sort of board meeting the following day and he wanted me to design some sort of PowerPoint presentation, which I don't like doing PowerPoint presentations, but he wanted me to do one for him. And when I told him, I says, well, I don't work evenings. He's the one that came up and says, well, what do you mean? This last job, you'd worked on it in the evening and got it to me in the morning. Why can't you do it with this one? And I had to really, really explain to him that no, and I didn't do the presentation for him. And he was upset at me because he thought due to the previous job that I told him, I'll work on it after my kids get to bed. I'll work on it this evening that he can have me any time of the day. So that taught me a valuable lesson of not telling your clients what your schedule is. Don't tell them when you're working. And I also make a point of regardless of when I'm working on a job, if I'm going to send, say, a proof to a client, I never make the PDFs or if I'm sending a video or whatever, I always wait till after nine o'clock in the morning to do it. I'll never create the PDF at night, even though I finish the job and I'm getting ready to go to bed. I'll wait till morning because I don't want them to look at the file and say, hey, this PDF was created at 1130 last night. So I will wait till after 9 a.m., create the PDF, create the video, create whatever it is. And then I will send them the email at that time during normal business hours because your clients will take advantage of you. If you start replying to emails late at night, they'll start expecting you to reply at all hours of the day. So even though working from home allows you that freedom, and I know I do it, I'll work in the evenings, I'll work sometimes early in the morning or all times on weekends and everything, my clients don't need to know that. So that's number five of the secrets you should keep from your clients, your schedule. Number six is your work procedures, or maybe I shouldn't say procedures, but your help or who you work with. Your clients don't need to know this stuff. They're hiring you. They don't need to know If you are getting somebody else to do some of the work, maybe you're an excellent designer, but you don't really know how to do the back end of stuff. So you have a web developer you work with. Well, they don't need to know who that web developer is. They need to know that they're hiring you. It's your company, your business that they're hiring. And what you do to get the final product to the client is up to you. It has nothing to do with the client. So they don't need to know this stuff. And in some cases, it might be for simple reasons that Say you found a a really, really good web developer through a a website like Elance or Upwork that they're called now, and this web developer happens to be in India, in the Philippines, or, or wherever, and you work really well with him. Maybe your client is one of these people who hired you because they wanted to deal with a local business. They didn't want to deal with somebody outside of the community. They might not want to work with you if they find out that somebody that's working on the job is actually somebody from overseas. I do print brokering. Whenever I design something for print, whether it's a postcard, a flyer, a poster, or business card, or office stationery, whatever it is, I'll often arrange for the printing and deal with the printer myself so that my client only has one bill. They pay me for everything and I take care of all the printing part. And I've had several clients that have hired me over the years because they've wanted to deal with somebody local. And that's great. I applaud them for that. But they don't need to know that some of the materials I get printed are not done by local printers because I can get much better rates by going to a printer that's somewhere else in the country. Even with shipping sometimes, it's still cheaper that way. Well, my client doesn't need to know that the printing's coming somewhere else. They just need to know that they're dealing with a local company. They're dealing with my company. Where I get my stuff is irrelevant to them. Now, the other reason to keep who you're working with a secret is every once in a while, the client might decide to go over your head. I hired an illustrator to do a series of illustrations for this client. They had this mascot they were using and they wanted the mascot in all sorts of different scenarios, depending on what marketing piece they were doing. And I had the illustrator come down and sit in on a meeting with us so that he would get to know exactly what the client wanted. And that was great. That project went out perfectly, got about a dozen different illustrations, all sorts of stuff. And the client absolutely loved everything. Well, then a few months later, I get an email from the illustrator saying that my client contacted the illustrator directly because they wanted some more illustrations and they tried to bypass me altogether. And luckily, the illustrator was a good guy and I had known him for a while and had used him on several projects. And he told the client that if they want to hire him, they would have to do so through me. 
And that's what ended up happening. The client came to me, said they needed some more illustrations. The reason they never contacted me is because they didn't need it designed into other pieces. They just wanted some illustrations that they were going to display at their office. And they thought they would just save time by going directly to the illustrator. So that's another reason not to share who you're working with with your clients because you don't want them to go over your head and start dealing directly with that person, whether it's a web developer, an illustrator, printer, or whatever the case may be. So that was number six. And number seven is kind of in a similar genre, and that's your suppliers. Your clients really don't need to know where you're getting your supplies for their jobs. Whether it's website hosting, I host websites for my clients. I charge them a monthly fee to host websites. Well, my clients don't need to know where the websites are actually being hosted. They know it's done through me. Now, I do have a contingency in place that if something ever happens to me, then my clients will be informed and they can get access to their website and all that stuff. But for the most part, I just don't tell them where it is. They're hosting through me. They don't need to know that I've bought server space at some company's server and do all the hosting through that company. The same thing with printing. I mentioned earlier how I source out printing from all over the place depending on where the best price is. Well, my clients don't need to know where I'm getting the printing from. They're hiring me to get the printing done. And if I can get them a better price than they can going to the local printers, then what difference does it make to them where I get it done? Similar to other promotional materials or t-shirts. I have a couple of clients that I do t-shirts for every year. And I've got a really, really good supplier for t-shirts. I can get t-shirts for like, a buck or under $2 per t-shirt. And then I have them screen printed and I have them sent somewhere else where they do all the screen printing for me. And my clients have told me that my prices have been way better than a lot of other places they had looked into. And when they ask me how my prices are so great, where am I getting the stuff? I just tell them that that's a, that's my trade secret. They don't need to know where I'm getting my t-shirts at such a low price. They don't need to know where I'm sending them to get printed. All they need to know is that I'm providing them a value that they've admitted is better than anywhere else that they can find. And they should be happy with that. So that's number seven, your suppliers. Whether it's web hosting, printing, promotional materials like t-shirts or pens and mugs and such. If you offer those sort of services as part of your graphic design business, and you should because it brings you in easy, easy extra money. But if you're doing any of that, your clients have no business knowing where you're getting the stuff from. Now, along the same lines, once again, number eight is your markup and your costs. Your clients don't need to know if you're getting discounts somewhere. Your clients have no business knowing what your cost is from your suppliers. I mentioned that I do print brokering. I don't mark up anything that I get done at a printer unless I'm getting it done at a trade-only printer, which deals only with designers and I know my clients couldn't go directly to them. I get a really good price from trade printers and then yes, I will mark those up. But the local printers in my city, I don't mark up any of their prices because my client could go directly to that printer for a price and they would know that, well, I can get it for $300 at the printer, but Mark's charging me $400. Why would I go through Mark? So I've negotiated deals with the printer, but instead of me marking up, they offer me a discount because I'm bringing them more work than what they would be getting from individual clients. Me being a client of the printer's, I could supply them with work on a regular basis through my clients and they offer me a discount off the price. Now, the good thing about this is whenever I ask for a quote from the printer, they give me a quote and they don't indicate my price. They give me the actual printing quote and I can then take that quote from the printer and show it to my client and saying, here, this is what the job is going to cost you. This is how much this project will cost to print. And it's the exact same quote that my client would get if they went directly to the printer. And then once the job is all said and done, the printer will then send me an invoice that includes my discount on the invoice. So that's how I make money. So then I take the original quote and I charge my client for it. My client will pay me that amount. And then whenever I get the invoice from the printer, it's been discounted so that I then pass the money that I got from my client onto the printer, keeping the little percentage as my fee for for doing that. So my clients don't need to know what percentage I get out of that. They don't even need to know that I get a cut of the printing cost. Just like t-shirts, I mentioned that I get really good prices on t-shirts, but I don't tell my clients what my price is. I do mark those up and all my client needs to know is what the final price is. I don't tell them how much if I'm marking it up 5%, 10%, 50%, 100%. My client doesn't need to know that stuff. Now this one here is kind of a no-brainer. 
any person running a business should know that you shouldn't be telling your clients what your markup is or what your costs are for anything. So hopefully you're already doing this one. So I won't talk about it anymore. And we'll move into the final one, number nine, secret that you should be keeping from your clients. And that's your other clients. For most part, and I say for most part because there does come times when it does help, but for the most part, your clients don't need to know who else you're working for. Now, a lot of times they can figure that out just by looking at your portfolio, you, which you proudly display the various logos, various pieces you've done for people around, for clients that you have. But most people don't have everything they do in their portfolio. And you don't have to divulge everything to your client. Now, if you're working for a big company, if you got a job from Pepsi Cola or you're doing something for Shell Oil or, or whatever, yeah, that's the sort of thing you want to tell your clients. I mean, that's a good pat on the back for yourself and say, hey, listen, look who I got as a client. But other times, you don't want your clients to know who else you're working for. I do work for two golf courses in my area. There's only two, actually, sorry. There's three, and one of them is a little bit farther away. But the two main local golf courses in the area, which would be the two biggest competitors with each other, I happen to do work for both of them. And neither one, as far as I know, knows that I do work for the other one. And what's funny is when I sat down with the second one, when I was hired by the second golf course to do work for them, during the meeting, they actually brought up a lot of stuff that the other golf course is doing in their marketing material. And they wanted to know how they can do better and what sort of stuff. And I never told them that I'm the one that designed that stuff for the first golf course because they didn't need to know that. All they needed to know was that I can do stuff for them that was different. Just like I have several clients that are lawyers and they all practice the same type of law. Now, I don't know if one law office and the other consider each other competitors or not, or if they work together, or I don't know how that all works. But I never mentioned to any of them that I do work for the other two. Because in my mind, they don't need to know that sort of thing. I mentioned earlier how it cost me a job by mentioning to the representative of the NDP party that I was doing design work for the rival candidate that was running for the Progressive Conservative Party. That was a mistake on my part. And the fact that I mentioned that client cost me this new client. And as I said earlier, I could have easily handled both jobs, done a really good job, remaining impartial to both parties, but I was never given the chance because the person from the NDP found out that I was doing work for the PC party. And what's kind of funny is that was probably eight years ago. And to this day, even though I've tried, the NDP party won't even consider me for a job because they knew I did something for the PC party. So right there, that covers number four, political and religious standings, and number nine, your clients don't need to know who your other clients are. Now, I know this last one could be hard sometimes, and you really have to judge this one yourself. Sometimes a client will legitimately want to know if you have any experience in their industry, and if it looks like you might lose the client otherwise, then yeah, let them know that yes, you did do some work for so-and-so or that you are familiar with this industry because of this job that you had done. But if it isn't brought up and you don't think it'll help you win the job, then keep who your other clients are a secret because you never know when it'll hurt you. So those are the topics that I wanted to cover, things to keep secret from your clients. Just go over those again. Number one was your home phone number. No reason for a client to know your home phone number when they can contact you through your business number. Number two was your home address, if at all possible, Meet with the clients on their turf or at a neutral location. There's no reason for your clients to know where you live. In this day and age, most of your clients, you're going to be dealing with them remotely anyway, so they don't really need to know where you live. Number three was your vacation. Don't tell your clients when you're going to be away from the house, when your house is going to be vacant and ready for the pickings. That's just asking for trouble. Number four was your political and religious standing. Number five, your schedule. Embrace the freedom of being a home-based graphic designer and work at whatever time of day or night you want to, but your clients don't need to know that. Number six was your work procedures or your contractors, who you work with, who you hire to help you with a project. Your clients don't need to know that because sometimes they might prevent them from wanting to hire you. All they need to know is that they are hiring you and you are the one they should have faith in to get the job done. Along the same lines, number seven was your suppliers, where you get your materials, where you get your printing, where you host websites and all that stuff. Your clients really don't need to know that stuff. Number eight was the no-brainer, your markups and your cost. If you are supplying this information to your clients, you're definitely doing something wrong. 
And finally, number nine is your clients themselves. Unless it's going to be used in your portfolio or if you think it'll help you win the job, there's no reason to mention other clients to new potential clients. So that's the topic for this week. I've got no question of the week this week, which is a little sad. I love answering your questions. If you have something that you would like to ask me, please visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash feedback and fill out my form there. Or if you want to just send me an email at feedback at resourcefuldesigner.com with your questions, that would be great. I love answering your questions about running a graphic design business, especially home-based business. So I look forward to receiving your questions. Now, while I'm telling you how to contact me, you can also hit me up on Twitter at resourcefuld and you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash resourcefuldesigner. Now, just an FYI, I am on Pinterest, Instagram, and Google+, although, to be honest, I don't frequent them very much. If you really want to get a hold of me or anything, Facebook and Twitter is the way to go. Now, I want to thank everybody who signed up for my newsletter and who has received my four-week marketing boost. If you haven't got your copy, you can do so by visiting marketingboost.net, and that'll automatically subscribe you to my newsletter. Or if you're in the USA, you can text Marketing Boost. 44222. And that'll get you the free guide as well as sign you up to the newsletter. In next week's episode of the podcast, I'll be talking about whether or not awards are important for your graphic design business. Until then, I wish you all the best in your graphic design business. I am Mark Decote, reminding you to stay creative. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.